Welcome back to the channel. Today is gonna to be a pretty anticipated video. We have the nut. Not just one, not just two, but we got a whole bag of nuts. <laughs> Perfect. Today we're gonna to be showcasing my arsenal of nut balls. The balls that I bring everywhere, the balls that I always end up throwing. It's usually the same handful that you see all the time. So there might be some surprises, there may not be some surprises. But anyways, it's just an updated version of what's in my bag pretty much all the time. So. Let's get into it. <laughs> Typically like to throw reactive first spot of the bag just to figure out what's going on in the lanes. I know this is the house shot. I've thrown some shots already, so I have a good idea of what I'm doing, but I usually like to pick out big strong ball. So the first one is the reality. Like to keep them pinned down. It's about a five inch pin with a longer buffer layout. On the weaker side, cuts the dip down, makes it smoother. It gives me a lot of options, but I like to play straighter with these stronger balls. But the reality is kind of special in respect to how many boards I can cover with it, or the range. I can play straight with it if I have to. I can get left and hook it. Surface changes are pretty good too. I like to keep them a little more on the dull side. This one's lane shined. Not exactly where I would have it for tournament purposes, but I'm gonna get lined up here. And as we change balls, I'm just gonna show you the progression as we go and try to explain what I'm seeing and why these balls are so good for me. So there, I kind of whiffed it at the bottom. Not my go-to house shot ball. I know for South Point, I complain about not having strong enough bowling balls. This one's probably pretty good. And again, not enough surface that I would normally have on it. First ball of the bag gets me the read, tells me what direction to go, and then I make my decisions based on that. We'll get dialed in with the reality, and then we'll make probably the wrong choice for what's out there. But for the sake of showing you guys the nut bag, we gotta do it. I'll move a little right, try to roll it a little more. And throw it a little more left. So off the rip, that kind of tells me that moving right wasn't really the play. I know I missed left, but knowing that what's out there is a little easier, left is probably the move. We're gonna go that direction. Also, a little more surface would help the ball blend out before it gets to the back of the pattern. What we're gonna do is speed. Bang. All right, so I don't wanna talk about how continuous a ball is because it really depends on what you're bowling on. Different balls are gonna do different things depending on what's out there. So you wanna build a very, very versatile arsenal. You don't want your balls to do the same thing all the time, like one on the tower shot. Not all the balls are gonna look good, and that's okay. You want bowling balls to cover all kinds of different grounds. When they're harder, you know, you want balls that'll look better then. When they're easier, same deal. From there, we're gonna take it to, I don't like to say favorite, but I throw it all the time, so you could probably call it my favorite. Pitch black. Obviously, a no-brainer. You probably could have guessed. No surprise there. I was gonna guess phase two, I'm not gonna lie. Phase two for favorite? Favorite reactive ball versus favorite? There's a spoiler. <laughs> phase two is one of the balls in the bag. It's kind of self-explanatory. The lanes are a little harder, a little flatter. You wanna blend out the lanes. Urethane will do that because they hook early. Urethane balls aren't weak. They hook really early. Earlier than any reactive ball, they're not meant to be thrown when the lanes are torched. That's only gonna make it worse. You wanna see that front to back window like we talked about in a lot of the videos. And then that left to right window is basically the ratio and how much room you have to hit the pocket. Fitting that box front to back is what we wanna look for. Pitch black's probably not gonna look great right now because that window is not pitch black window. A little easier, there's free hook to the right. Probably a little more oil in the middle of the lane. But when we talk about free hook, not really what urethane wants to see. And by hook, I mean how it's reading the lane. We talk about stronger or weaker, it's where it reads the lane. Stronger is earlier, weaker is further down the lane. So urethane's in a weird category where in terms of where it hooks, it's considered strong, but the core's on the weaker side. We're gonna get dialed in. We'll throw a couple more shots with the urethane ball, but there's really no reason. It's in here for good reason, and I think most of you know why if you watch the channel all the time. But if you don't, it's just a ball that I've just gotten pretty good at throwing. Voila, I'm not even gonna throw it again. We're gonna go in the reactive ball. All right, so at the top of the bag, we have reality and pitch black. Just depends on what I'm seeing with my eye. If the urethane balls look good, I will lean towards it more often than not. Uh, if not, I'm throwing the strong asymmetric balls. I'd also like to mention anybody out there that wants to join the tour one day, there are two main things that I think you need to go out there. You gotta be able to throw urethane for one, unless you're Chris Prather and you just have the ridiculous touch at the bottom. And you gotta be able to hook the lane. It's not really about how many revolutions you have, but it's more of the shapes you can create. Getting steep, getting around the middle of the pattern, and uh, not falling into that flatness trap. You know, when you're balling on the house shot, that's exactly what you don't want. Normally you're playing the track, you got unlimited hold left, you got hook right. On the tour, it's the 
dead opposite. We need to create hook so that we can get around the flatness of the pattern, but still get our balls to hook when they get to the right. As Jesse alluded to, and um, look how dirty this thing is. You can really tell this is a ball that I throw a lot. I don't really clean my equipment, which you should. So don't be like Darren. Clean your bowling balls if you want them to last a long time. Phase two. A uh, ball that's been great for me since the day it came out. Been in my bag for six years. Been a nut ball for six years. I don't really go anywhere without it. The closest ball to this one's probably the Zen Soul. I'm gonna take a chunk to the left. May not be far enough left, but we'll see where we're at. So just barely, I got the wizard's touch on this bowling ball. Alex Hoskin is the bowling ball wizard. That's what I call him. We're gonna keep moving left and see how good this phase two is gonna keep looking. Actually, I already know. There's a lot of videos out there where I'm locking the cap with this thing and it's pretty unreal. I just moved like five and it hit the same spot, so. Yeah, so that's our top half of the bag. Now we're moving into the lower half. Although I kind of like to look at it in categories. Category number one, balls for the fresh. It's not specifically any type of bowling ball, just balls that you find useful on the fresh. For me, that's pitch black, reality. I could be throwing phase two as well. Maybe even a clean ball, but it's really situational. Category number two, a strong symmetric bowling ball. Could be pearl, could be solid, could be a hybrid. But for me, that's phase two and zen. We're moving into pearl symmetric bowling balls, the cleaner options, that's gonna be zen. A cleaner symmetric bowling ball. Category number three. Category number four would be balls that I use for the cliff, usually stronger cores, cleaner covers. So I can be a little bit closer to the friction, but that asymmetry gets it to stand up and roll off it instead of booming off it when it sees it. Category number five is balls that I can hook the lane with. I've gotten pretty good at curving the lane because I throw it pretty slow and I got some tricks with my hands, so that's a lot of different bowling balls for me. Category number six would be a low RG, low differential ball, and it's just a different shape. So when a lot of your bowling balls may not be looking very good, you need something to kind of float through it but still be on the smoother side, that's where that fits. Ball number four. I actually haven't thrown this ball in a long time. Zen ball good. Why haven't I thrown this ball in a long time? The 4K Fast, I wasn't a fan on this ball because out of the box, I kind of needed the teeth to pick up and then the cleanliness of the pearl or the shiny cover got it to pop off. I think the 4K Fast made them a little too smooth, not enough teeth because 4K is much more than 1500. But now that we have Reactor Gloss and that 1500 back underneath, I think I'll be throwing this ball a lot again. And also my phase two hooks are a ridiculous amount. I've kind of been skipping over this slot in the bag. Zen ball's still good. Couldn't you just resurface it yourself? I could, but I'm lazy. Don't be lazy. The Wolverine Dark Moss has also been a good option, kind of in this slot. That kind of bridges the gap between the high roads and the stronger balls, the mid RG and the uh, somewhat higher differential. Zen might be finding its way back in the bag for upcoming tournaments. One more regional for the year, so we'll see. Get into that house shot cliff. But Zen has been pretty good on a variety of different patterns. A very nice one-two punch for me is phase two in the Zen because one's a cleaner option. I think the Zen for me is actually a little smoother core-wise. So I like that clean and smooth motion for a middle of the bag kind of deal. Uh, another ball that's like an honorable mention, but you can't really get any more that fits in this slot for me, UFO Alert. It's got a weaker cover, but a stronger core. It's just a little bit different shape, but really like that in the middle of the bag. This one rolls pretty good. I don't know why I don't throw it anymore. Nut balls, nuts all around. Nut, nut, nut. Another ball we have coming in at slot number five is one that you don't see too often because I've honestly been throwing the pitch black in the face to at almost every tournament. But this is my low RG, low differential option in the last nut bag. You probably saw the solid version. I kind of flip between the two depending on what I'm bowling, what I'm bowling on. The Emerald has been one of my go-to pieces in this slot for the low RG, low differential. You can also put this in the Pearl Symmetric. Are IQ still considered strong? The low diff makes them a little less strong, so we'll go with no. Moving a little back to the right just because the lower diff. So it's that different shape. You want that lower diff for more float? They're kind of weird with that low RG. They want to pick up early, but the lower diff makes them hook less. What's the difference between float and cleanliness? If a ball is cleaner, usually cover for me. If I want a ball to float more, I think of it as core, but that's just how I perceive it. You can perceive it any way you want to. Yeah, a little more float, clean cover. Same cover as the High Road Series, R2S Pearl. It's a good ball, one I'll be bringing on the tour with me. Nut, okay, that wasn't the nut, but I haven't hit the button at all. 
All right, and our last piece here is the trusty high road. And the only reason why I have the original high road with me is because I don't have the high road. I don't have a high road pearl with me. For the same reason, I haven't been throwing the Zen a lot. I didn't love 4K fast on the high road pearl, so I will be getting another one soon, gearing up for the tour. But high road is taking the cake for now. I feel like High Road Pro would have popped off it a little harder. Really smacked that 10 pin. The High Road's been really good for us later in the stretch. Del Ballard always used to say the lanes always come to a High Road. I haven't seen a lot of original ones go down the lane. We do have the upgraded version, the Night Road, so maybe we'll see a lot of those on tour this year. But still a useful piece. I'll probably be bringing this one on tour too because we get into a lot of kind of grimy uh, places that get kind of tough for the stronger balls. The weaker balls should be in play. Ah, yeah, right now, just probably a little too weak for what's out there. IQ's been looking pretty good. Zen's looking pretty good. Phase two as well. But high roads have been really interesting for me throughout the years because they're clean, but they're still kind of on the smooth side. They've never been that boomerang ball, uh, which I like a lot. You want to control the middle of the lane as much as possible. Let's try to nut one here. Got a chance, maybe. Yeah, it's kind of stretching too far down the lane right now. All right, guys, so those are my bag of nuts, my go-to arsenal when I have no idea what I'm bowling on. The balls are always in my bag, no matter what. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what your go-to bowling balls are. I'm curious to see, and if you have any of these in there as well.